Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Today we're going to talk about five questions I often get when people are asking about switching to Linux. So welcome back to the program. If you've not already, please consider subscribing to the channel. As you are going throughout this video, if you really like the content, give me some likes, give me some comments down below, ask your questions, or hey, maybe answer somebody else's questions in the comments. We're gonna get into five questions I often get when people are asking about switching to Linux. So let's get into our questions. The first question, can I take my movies, my music, my photos with me to Linux? This is a great question. Let's answer this in a couple different ways though. First and foremost, Linux works just fine with movies and music and pictures as long as you have the proper codecs installed. Some distributions are a lot easier to get working with them. Some of them are a little bit harder. All of them will work. In reality, it's one or two terminal commands at worst. Most distros, it's not even like that. For example, my favorite Linux Mint, hey, it asks you right in the installer, would you like to install codecs? And that's the case with every Ubuntu-based distribution. Most Linux distros have a very easy way to install all of those codecs that you need to play your movies, to play your music out of the box. Linux Mint Debian Edition, they have a post-install item in the welcome uh, screen where you can click the button to install those. Other things like Fedora are going to be a little bit harder. You need to add the repos for that. It's well documented. There's a lot of steps. Debian, Again, well-documented, a lot of steps, but you're going to be doing terminal commands. MX Linux, it's right there in the menu, install multimedia codecs. So the reality is you need these. That's part one of the answer. Part two is where are your media files at? Some of the newer systems are making it harder and harder to save them out. It's a way to lock you into the vendor. So if you have a thousand songs on your iTunes, Yes, you can take them, but you're going to have some time to get those files out. Now with music, Apple does not lock those to the system, but you do have to go through the various steps to download them. I don't actually know how to do that. I'm sure it's online somewhere. Okay, but still you get your files out of there, you move those onto your Linux computer, and yes, they're going to work just fine. So your movies, your music, your photos, no problems at all. You can move all of those over to your Linux system. You can drop in your music folders, your images folders, your video folders, or however other organization that you would like to use. So there is no problem with that. Number two, do I need antivirus? All right, so the answer to this one is generally no. For the most part, most of the viruses in the world are Windows viruses. Windows programs don't work on Linux. Now, if you are installing the Wine compatibility layer to allow Windows executable files to run on your Linux box, you are opening yourself up a little bit to that. Although most of these applications will sandbox things for you, so it's not as huge of a risk, it's still something you want to do. If you are sharing a bunch of files back and forth, you might consider it's going to prevent you from accidentally spreading a Windows virus onto something else that might land in an email inbox. But for the most part, even the virus scanners that do exist for Linux, like ClamAV, they are just looking for Windows viruses. So be aware of that. Now, are there going to be some security vulnerabilities? There's security vulnerabilities in everything. So keep up with those updates. And I like the Debian branch because it maintains stability gets the security updates without changing all the features in my software. If you want to be on like a Fedora or on an Arch, you'll get a more rolling release where you will have the latest features in those software as well. Still, you're not going to need antivirus, but you do want to make sure your system is up to date with the security updates. So that is a very simple answer to that one. Number three, can I run 
X application, where X is whatever you're asking about. Okay, so running applications on Linux. This answer, it depends on what you're using. So if you are already used to using free and open source software or just software that is called cross-platform, yes, you can use that piece of software. If Google Chrome is absolutely your favorite browser, you can run it on nearly any Linux distribution. I personally don't like that option, but hey, Firefox, again, even the latest Microsoft Edge, they're working on a Linux build for it. So whatever your web browser is, you can probably use that on Linux. Some email applications such as Thunderbird, again, are cross-platform. Windows, Mac, Linux, no problem at all. LibreOffice, cross-platform, no problems at all. Are you going to run Adobe software and Microsoft software? These are the two big ones. By Microsoft software, I mean Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint. Well, in theory, using Wine, it's possible to get those applications installed. It's definitely not the most ideal approach. I like answering this question in this way. Number one, are you absolutely locked to that application or is that just the application that accomplishes a task you need to accomplish? For me personally, I'm freelance in everything I do. I don't have a boss. I can choose, if I say I need to get a website built, do I have to use Dreamweaver? No, I can use Bluefish, Blue Griffin, other things like that, which do have cross-platform feels. Now, you might be locked into a particular software package because of work or something else you're doing. Unfortunately, with those, you can see if it's gonna run on Wine. It, may, it might, it might not. So the answer to this one is you gotta look. But that first line of defense asks, do you just need a task accomplished or are you legitimately have to run that software package? And then you go over to the Wine database and see does that application work on Linux under Wine or not? And that's going to answer that question. But I always advocate look for other solutions and other options out there rather than locking yourself into I have to edit photos so I have to use Photoshop. No, GIMP is just as powerful as Photoshop and it's cross-platform. Now, you might be locked into using Photoshop for your particular job, that's a different answer altogether. But anyway, that is not as clean and cut, but hopefully it is a full and complete answer about running your favorite applications. Number four, can I try before I buy? This is an excellent question, and the answer is an unresounding yes. In fact, we encourage you to try before you buy. Play around with a lot of different distributions. We're gonna to get to that question next. But you can always try out Linux in a variety of different ways without actually wiping out your operating system. In fact, I don't even recommend dual booting on your existing hard drive without being a little bit more advanced than a basic level. Even though some of the tools make it very easy to do that, it's generally very safe to do that. I don't wanna mess with that. I don't wanna mess with the existing operating system on your computer until you know for sure you are ready to switch. So how can you try it out? Well, number one, the easiest and least invasive way is if you have a good system, a higher power computer, install VirtualBox or VMware, one of the other virtualization systems. Make sure that you enable virtualization in the BIOS of your computer, and then you can download all the Linux distros you want, spin them up inside of a virtual machine, and give them a test spin for a while. That is an excellent way of testing out a distribution okay now if your computer is not quite as beefy well you can actually install Linux onto USB drives you can get a variety of different software that's going to allow you to take a .iso file and put it onto a USB stick or even burn it to a DVD drive if your computer happens to have such a drive then you can take that drive and you can boot off of it. Now, on most modern computers, you're going to need to go into the BIOS and you're going to need to change your BIOS order so that you can boot from a USB drive. Most systems now to boot faster will go right to that first hard drive and you're gonna to have to take a few extra steps to get your system booting off that external USB drive. 
okay? But very easy to do. It's not invasive on the system. You just gotta get into your BIOS, make that setting. I have some videos about that. Okay, the other thing you can do is you can do a full installation onto an external hard drive. Linux works great on external hard drives. That's actually how I run one of my bigger computers is only run on an external hard drive. There's a little hard drive sitting there. It's always, you know, it's always on, it's always running. My system defaults to that if it's plugged in. If it's not plugged in, then it goes to one of the other operating systems inside of the computer. So those are two ways or three ways rather you can try out Linux before you buy it. Of course, the next way is, hey, go onto Craigslist or eBay or something and just buy uh, an older computer or an alternative computer and just wipe that one out and install Linux directly on that. So there's a few ways you can try out Linux before you switch your main system, which I never really recommend a cold turkey wiping everything and going right onto the system because we end up with a case where uh, we end up with a case where you get frustrated, you're trying to do one thing and you get mad and switch back. I'd rather you have a more smooth, slow and comfortable transition into Linux. Before we get into our last, if you've not already, subscribe to the channel, go ahead and give me some likes, some comments down there, and let's go ahead and move on into number five. Number five, which distribution do I use? There's thousands of them. It is unfortunate that there's thousands of them, but I would rather have thousands of distributions than one or two. It gives us a lot more variety and a lot more good choice when we are choosing which distributions we would like to do. So for me, my answer to this is there is a degree of what's going to work the best for a new user and a balance of what your personal subjective choices happen to be. If you are just super comfortable, you love the Windows type environment and setup, you want to do a traditional desktop experience, you want to do something more like Linux Mint Cinnamon that has a traditional Windows interface with all the modernness of a modern computer system. It's going to be very easy, very comfortable, and the Linux Mint system is one of the most intuitive and easy to use and easy to install systems. It's going to feel most at home. Now there's other ones like Farron OS is a uh, new distribution that's based on Ubuntu that has a variety of different switchers. You can choose a Mac type layout, a Windows type layout, a few other things. They have a lot of the theming stuff in there that makes it more, uh, more modern, more elegant. And again, very easy to use and a lot of good tools, including some to choose what web browser you're using and things like that. So Farron is a good one as well. If you're a more computer expert type guy, you want to get a little more under the hood, you want a better learning experience, Fedora, OpenSUSE will give you those, but for the most part, I wouldn't recommend those to the brand new users. Ultimately though, I encourage you to go back to step four, try out a couple different builds, understand Linux is a the kernel underlying how the system works and a desktop environment that you actually interact with. Figuring out which desktop environment you want to use is oftentimes the best way to go. Figure out what you like and then find a Linux distribution that does that desktop well. So those are my five answers to five questions I frequently get asked about switching to Linux. Let me know your questions or your answers in the comments down below.